Question 3. The data of the medals is stored in the three medal spreadsheet. So let's go ahead and open that up and we need to be working in the medals worksheet which we are in already. Okay, so you'll see I've highlighted a few words over here. Um, don't worry about that now. It's just things that I've seen mis uh, people misread. Okay, so let's start with 3.1. Make the following changes to the first row. 3.1.1, merge and center cells A1 to P1. So to do that, we select A1 all the way to P1 and we choose merge and center. Just that. Next, add light blue shading to the merged cell. That's just a plain light blue like that. That's ideal. Like, don't go too dark or too funny. Light blue is fine. Um, I see with this question, uh, the merging as well as the fill, uh, people did more than what was required. So they would do extra steps, such as aligning it left again, which I don't know why you would do that, um, or applying a gradient effect, which you can do here from format cells. Um, by full you can go do funny full effects but that wasn't asked so don't do more than a question asks um, it might cost you a mark at some point so rather don't 3.2 use a spreadsheet feature on cell a5 to a43 that will automatically insert the rank from 1 to 39 now this question confused a lot of people and they did the you can actually you actually get a function rank I don't know how it works. Um, people try to figure it out. But if they had just looked at the mark allocation, they would have seen they're trying to overcomplicate this completely. And the question didn't ask for a function. It used it asked for a spreadsheet feature. So something that's inherent to a, a spreadsheet that you can't do on another program. Um, so this was simply autofill. It was literally just um, typing one, two, and then using autofill to fill it all the way to the bottom. So to do that, you select the first two and then you can drag down on the green square all the way to 39. That was all that was necessary. So all I did is I indicated the pattern and then I was able to drag it down. 3.3. .3. Each country needs a unique code to receive their overall final results. Use a formula in cell B6 to create this unique code by using the following instructions. The abbreviation of the country, column C, followed by the at sign, followed by the total number of gold medals for the country that can be found in column G. All right, so I'll just first quickly highlight a few um, mistakes that I saw people made. And the first thing was a lot of people use the first three characters on the left because the first few records, it looked like that worked. But if you go down a little bit, um, even Cook Islands, you can already see that this abbreviation at the end is not the same as the first three letters of this um, country. So you were supposed to use this abbreviation that you can find at the end of the cell. All right, so we're supposed to add this together, together with an at, as well as the total gold medals in column G. So I'm not going to try and do everything in one step. I'm going to use building blocks. Building blocks is doing the function or uh, splitting up the function into little pieces. Now, because this is um, data that is vertical, I'm going to do my building blocks vertically next to this so that if I need to, I could copy it down, even though the question doesn't ask for it. All right, so in the same row that my final answer needs to be, my final answer needs to be in B6, um, in that same row, I'm going to start by trying to figure out where I can extract this um, or how I can extract this uh, abbreviation. The, so the first step is to use the find function to find where the bracket starts, the literal position. So to type that, you'll see find starts with find text, what text it needs to find. So the text it needs to find is a an open bracket, comma, look at your tooltip, within text, within what text should it find it? Within this. And then start number, can you see this one has square brackets? That means it's optional. 
we don't need to specify at which number the um, function needs to start searching. So I can just close my function after that. And you'll see for this country, it found the open bracket starts at position 12. So the next step for me will be to actually extract three letters after this position. So to use that, I will use the function mid. Mid is a function you can use to extract some characters from the middle of text. So let's look at the tooltip. Mid, the first argument is the text. This is the text I want to use, comma, start num. Now say you're not actually sure what these things mean. Just open your function builder. Once you've opened your bracket, you can open your function builder and it will give you such a great additional help. So there I've specified my text and it actually shows you a description here at the bottom. Text is the string, is the text string from which you want to extract the characters. Starting number is the position of the first character you want to extract. Now the first position or the first character position that I want to extract is the position of the comma or of the bracket, sorry, plus one because I don't want it to actually extract the bracket, plus one. And you'll notice even though I have the answer 12, I can't type in 12 over here because then it's um, becoming a function that I'm doing by hand and it won't work if I copy it down for other cells. So it starts at number 12 plus one. And how many characters do I want to extract? Num characters specifies how many characters to return from the text. I want three characters returned. And it actually then shows me what the answer is. So if I didn't put that plus one, you would have seen it would have started at the actual brackets open or open bracket. All right. So there I've got the first three letters or the um, abbreviation. So now the rest is easy. Now I can add them together. There are two ways to do that. The one way is to use a function. The other one is to use basically a formula. So I prefer the formula method. I'll show you both. So um, it should start with this text, correct? And then I want to add something else to that. So I can use the and sign. It's called an ampersand actually. The and sign and then the next thing I want to add together is an at which I enclose in brackets or in uh, parentheses and then next I want to add another ampersand it's almost like glue gluing these things together the other thing I want to add is the number of gold medals there you go and now if I copy this just to taste up and down and I copy this up and down you'll see it actually works for all the instances. Now I just quickly want to show you how you would have done this um, with the function concatenate that would have looked like this concatenate um, you'll see I don't know about you but I can't spell concatenate so um, I just type the first few letters and then I press tab to actually autocomplete the full function. So the first bit of text I want to add together is this ban the second part of text is an at and it'll enclose it in uh, parentheses automatically. And the third part is this. There you go. Both methods would have worked and would have given you full marks. 3.4. Use a suitable spreadsheet feature. Again, a feature of a spreadsheet program, not a function. To apply the three stars icon set in the range H5 to K43 as follows. So we need a three stars icon set on this range. I'm going to start just by doing that. So I select H5 to K43. And then the three icon set or the three star icon set I can find here under conditional formatting. Icon sets three stars. Okay, now the thing is it's already applied something now. So I didn't get the chance to customize this. So to customize it, I then need to go to manage rules to be able to actually edit this rule that I've just started. So 
ideally, I see lots of people um, try a few things. And then you, when I open this up to market, I see two or three icon sets that they've tried. So remove the ones that are wrong by choosing delete rule and rather just apply the one and then just edit the rule. That's the correct way to do it. So let's see what rules we need to apply. If the number is greater than or equal to 10, a full star should display. Okay, so greater than or equal to 10. So I can put that in there, but the problem is here. The type at the moment is percentage and I don't want percentage. I want number for both of these. So I change both of these to number and then I can change the value to greater than or equal to 10. And next, if the number is between five and nine boundaries included, half a star should display. So it's going to start at five then, greater than and equal to five. And you'll see anything below 10, in other words, nine, will also get this half star. And then the last is obvious. If the number is less than five, a blank star should display. This is a blank star not no icon. I see some people put it as no cell icon. That's not what was asked. A blank star. So the one without that, that's not filled. Okay. Apply. Okay. Let's go see if that worked. There you go. That's much better. Use a function in cell P5 to display the word qualify. If the total number of medals, gold, silver, and bronze, is greater than or equal to 50. Otherwise, the cell should be left blank. Okay, so lots of people miss this instruction that it needs to be the total number of medals for gold, silver, and bronze. And then all they did is just a one total that they used to do the function. All right, so the easiest way would be is to actually do a calculation in a separate column and then do the if based on that column. So, that method you could have done two ways. You could have gone just plus, plus, plus and used that. Or you could have used a sum, but you have to use a sum correctly. If you look at the function builder, you'll see the arguments is the first number it has to sum with a comma, not a plus. A comma and a comma, and then it will sum those three together. You shouldn't use a plus in a sum. In final exams, you will be penalized for that. Okay, so I can do that, and then I've got all my cells over there that it has totaled. And then I can do an if, and they said the function, um, it should be greater than or equal to 50, and then it should display the word qualify, otherwise the cell should be left blank. As soon as you see the word otherwise, you should know that's an if. So let's see how to do that. Equals if, and let's open our function builder. My logical test is whether this amount is greater than or equal to 50. If it is, it should display the word qualify and it will automatically add my parentheses. But if it shouldn't display or if it's less than 50, then it should be blank. Now blank is actually two parentheses right up against each other. There can't be a space in between and I'll show you why just now. Okay, so that would have gotten full marks. So let me just show you a variation or two. The one variation would have been to actually do the sum over here, which you could have done and said sum of that and that and, oh, I'm just going to click below it and then move my, um, move it up with my arrows on my keyboard. So the sum of that must be greater and equal to 50. Or you could have done plus, 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 both ways would have worked. That's the best way to do it, but both ways, whether you do it in a building block um, or all at once, you get the same number of marks. I just quickly want to show you why it doesn't work if you use a space in the blank indicator. So if I, I'm going to change it and make it wrong and I'm going to put a space there. And it looks right because everyone that doesn't qualify has a blank cell, doesn't it? But let me show you, if I use account blank now, it actually doesn't find any blank cells because all these cells have spaces in them. If I change this and remove that 
space and copy it down you'll see it actually finds 18 blank cells so there is a difference between a space and an actual blank cell which the two parentheses right up against each other um, create okay work in the chart worksheet 3.6 edit the graph or chart to appear as shown below in the example below by following the instructions below so please don't try to change the way this looks before following all the instructions at the bottom because sometimes they give the instructions in a specific order for a reason so the first thing add a graph or chart title with the text top five nations so let's go to chart and add a chart title that says top five nations just click away all right move the legend to the bottom of the chart now you'll see in this picture gold silver and bronze are next to each other but at the moment the legend is it reads vertical right gold silver and bronze below each other instead of next to each other so I can't just click and drag this I need to use a chart option to do it so here by legend with my um, arrow I can go choose the position should be bottom so I'm not moving it I'm actually just changing the position next up I need to change the vertical axis values to display as shown in the example above so this is in intervals of 20 if you see and it ends at 100 let's try that so this one ends at 50 and it's in intervals of five so we need to fix that always click on the item that you're trying to fix so we can just right click on that and choose format axis and any kind of chart features in terms of like data position or these um, access titles and things you need to edit will always be under the chart icon itself not under the formatting icons so we want the maximum bound this end position to be at 100 and we want the major units not to be every five but to be every 20 enter that's better lastly we need to add the three gold image found in the examination folder so that it is stacked for the gold data series we can see that and at the moment it's just blue so to do that I'm going to click on the gold point and you'll see it chose all the blue ones right now I can go to the formatting icon the little paint bucket choose full go to picture file and choose the file that they've provided there you go and then lastly what I need to do instead of it having stretched it needs to be stacked and there you go hope that helped please don't also do any extra things on the charts I see some people added um, lines in the middle and borders and who knows all else you can't see the chart clearly enough on the paper that's been copied so don't try and do any extra things that they didn't specify um, if it's not copied clearly they wouldn't expect of you to do that